Well, come on. Come on. All right, we got a package. Oh, that's way close. All right, we got a package of some eggs in the mail today. Let's check it out. We got these eggs from Burton's Aviaries in Southern Missouri. They came courtesy of Four Kids in a Farm actually had them sent to us. Check out these eggs. We've got 20 of the smallest eggs I have ever seen. These come from button quail. We have never hatched out any kind of quail. We recently got some Tennessee red quail, but these ones will be even smaller. It'd be fun to see how tiny these guys are when they hatch out. All right, we're gonna let these guys rest for a little bit after their shipment, and then we'll get them out to the incubator. And while we're hatching the smallest quail today, you can do the same thing with your finances. You can start with something small. And today's video is sponsored by Stash. And they can help you take control of your finances through automation, budgeting, saving, and smart spending. Hey, bub. Want to start investing but think it takes a lot of money? With as little as a dollar, you can start buying stocks and funds to build your portfolio. Stash helps you do this through fractional shares by breaking down whole, larger investments into smaller, more manageable investments. Good morning, Dolly. Want to start your retirement account but don't know where to start? Come on, Dolly. For just a dollar, you can start saving for your future and potentially get the tax benefits from it. Is a cow the way to go to? Save for your retirement? <laughs> no, it's the opposite. <laughs> They'll take your money. And here's a special bonus for our viewers. You'll receive $15 when you open an account and deposit a dollar or more into your personal portfolio. So get started investing today by using the link in our description and we'll get back to hatching the smallest quail you've ever seen. We're in the middle of hatching out some peacock eggs, or at least trying to, and check out the size difference between a peacock egg, which is about the size of a turkey egg, a little bit bigger than a duck egg. Quite a few button quail go into this peacock egg. So this morning, I'm going to get these 20 button quail eggs all set up in the incubator. Hopefully we'll see somebody hatch in 16, 17, 18 days from now. For this project, we'll be using the Brinzi Maxi Advance, and this incubator is great for smaller eggs. It has an insert for chicken eggs, but it also has an insert that holds pheasant or quail eggs. I've got it set to rotate every 45 minutes on here, but it's perfect for these little eggs. All right, now let's just wait for them to hatch. All right, well, we are a couple days from these button quail from hatching, but there are a couple that are already pipping. Check this out. This little one there, can you see? So we've stopped the turning on this incubator and now we'll watch some of the smallest birds in the world and the smallest quail start to hatch. All right, check out these quail. Oh my gosh, they're so tiny. Are they for real? They look fake. Oh. This one's even a different color. Can they be any color? Yeah, they're a whole variety of color, I think. Yeah, it's like it's hard to even show them off. What would you compare this size to? What would you even say that? There's little. I was picturing those. The boys have those little box cars that are tiny. Uh -huh. It's kind of like that. <laughs> it's like mini size. It's so crazy. Look how tiny they are. Size of my thumbnail. guys have been hatching over the last uh, day or two and it's time to move them into their brooder and that's a little bit of a challenge with a bird this tiny because we got to deal with food trays and we may have to oh yeah we're probably gonna have to smash that up we'll see if they can eat that there's some little bitty crumbs in there. there's some little bitty crumbs we may even have to have like dust particles for them to eat and then the water we've got to make sure they don't drown in and so they're probably gonna hop up into the water and then just stand on the rocks 
and drink in there. So it's gonna be a little bit of a circus to get them out because as soon as we open this up, every time we we uh, crack it open to check on the eggs, they start darting everywhere. So let's see. Okay. Different color. And multicolored. Yeah. Super cool. They're just gonna. Let's see if it'll live. If we can get around to food and water, it'll survive. And maybe it'll live long enough to help work its way out. Nine in there. All right, well, we just hatched these hook-billed ducklings, and then there it is next to the button quail. So you can see just how teeny tiny a, a little quail is next to a regular-sized duckling. Just minuscule, it's so tiny. Hey, this video's not about you. <laughs> So the boys made a new brooder for our button quail. All right, so we've got five little button quail down here. And you guys got the other, is there two or three inside? Three? Uh, three, one died. Okay, we had, we had one that we lost, one that was having walking issues. We got one more that was doing okay in here. But we're gonna move them all inside to the new brooder. Go ahead. Uh, I can't wait to stew. I'm gonna move this. What kind of incubator did you, or what kind of brooder did you make? Lego. Lego. It's too crowded in here. Ding, 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 ding. got a new layout in here in our brooder shed just for these quail. We've had them in here for the past month. And our chicken brooder that we kind of use for everything. But then we've got this new shelf that we can put the button quail and the other quail. Wow. In. All right, let me see if I can lift it. All right, so check out these two new brooders. Kind of a beast and we took a risk because it fits Really only fits this area in our barn. So but I fill it up with some wood chips. So we put these two brooders together last night. They're four feet tall in the front, they're two feet tall in the back, so it's got a little slanted roof. And then there's these little doors right here. So you can open it and close it from the top. So hopefully the quail will be in the bottom and won't hop out. And so we can control one half of the side up there. There's a, an opening on the other side if we need to take it outside and clean it out. And then we've got a ton of fun shelves in here. We've got some different shelving all around here. So hoping they'll hop up and down, they'll run them around. We can put their food and water out here. And now all we need are some button quail. We need to show you what they look like a month later. It's a button quail. Yeah, we need to focus on buttons. Oh my gosh. Whoa. So here are the button quail at a month old. And they're a lot bigger. They're kind of like the size of a baby chick. And so let's put these in their new home. And this is the one that had the deformed foot. And it's doing just fine. He's still got his little foot, but kind of a, a dead foot. <laughs> Here's quail number four and five. They look really cool. Quail number six. And seven. I almost jumped out of my hand. <laughs> Oof. We let go of these guys for a second and they are off. We've already yeah. had to catch two of them while we're showing them to you here. There you go. <laughs> Almost three. <laughs> so what do you think about these button quails so far? They're very fast. They're pretty fun. They start up pretty small and don't get very big. So they're going to be really easy to take care of. And... All right. Let's watch them run around in their new house. We can run away. We don't got to stay. I can feel it. It burns inside. Baby. Take away the pain. We can go and say. I can feel it. It burns inside. Baby. We can run away. We don't got to stay. They keep knocking over the camera. A button pill. Oh my gosh. 